today. Vamos a orar en esta mañana para que el Señor venga y reciba estas alabanzas de labios y, y bendiga nuestras vidas. Vamos todos a orar. Divino Maestro, te damos honra y te damos gloria. We give you honor and glory today, Lord Jesus. Te damos gracias por la vida, por la salud. We give you thanks for life and for our uh, wellness. Te damos honra y te damos gloria para siempre, Señor Santo. Te pedimos en esta mañana que tú recibas estas alabanzas de labios, que tú recibas toda honra y toda gloria, Señor. Te pedimos que tú seas con nosotros y uses mi vida en el nombre glorioso de Jesucristo. I ask you today, Lord, for you to use my life uh, for this word that, hallelujah, you're going to bring to our lives this morning. I ask you for you to give us understanding today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, 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 aleluya. Uh, vamos a abrir nuestras Biblias. Let's open up our Bibles, um, book of Acts, chapter 11. En el libro de los Hechos, capítulo 11, del 1 al 17. Capítulo 11, del 1 al 17. Acts, chapter 11, from 1 all the way through 17. Chapter 11 from books of uh, from the book of Acts 1 through 17 Capítulo 11 de Hechos del 1 al 17 And the word of God says from 1 through 17 chapter 11 Acts it says and the apostles and the brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. Note that, uh, pay attention to what verse 1 says, uh, brothers and sisters, says, and the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, They that were of the cir circumcision contended with him, saying, Thou wentest into men uncircumcised and didst eat with them. But Peter rehearsed that matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of, how do you pronounce the word? Joppa. Joppa. Praying and in a trance, I saw a vision. A certain vessel descended as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners. And it came even to me upon the which when I had fastened my eyes, I considered and saw four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed that call not thou common. And this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And behold, immediately there were 
three men already come unto the house where I was sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit had me go with them, nothing doubt, doubting. Moreover, their six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into me, the man's house, and he showed us how he he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house. Which stood and said unto him, Send me to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all my all thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them. As on us at the beginning, then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as gave, I mean, as God gave them. The like gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. What was I that I could withstand God? Okay, I'm going to uh, read it in Spanish so uh, the other sisters uh, may understand what I'm reading. And that would make, uh, simplify, simpli I will simplify it for myself to... Speak it in the English language as well. Just bear with me a moment. Oyeron los apóstoles del uno en delante. Oyeron los apóstoles a los hermanos que estaban en Judea. Que también los gentiles habían recibido la palabra de Dios. Also the Gentiles had received the word of God. Just like we received it. Or I mean in this case I would be considered a Gentile. Right? Because of. I, I, I wasn't I wasn't a Jew, I'm, as you can see. Oyeron los apóstoles y los hermanos que estaban en, Ju en Judea, que, ten, que también los gentiles habían recibido la palabra de Dios. You would be considered a Gentile too, Sister Emily. At that time. Y cuando Pedro subió a Jerusalén, disputaban... Con él, los que eran de la circuncisión. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contented with him. In other words, they were against Peter, Peter in that moment because he was going to the Gentiles. He was giving the word of God to the Gentiles. And they had, in, in those times, the Gentiles didn't have part <coughs> with them. So that's why they were mad, contented, contenting against uh, Peter. Verse 3 in Spanish, diciendo, ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué has entrado en casa de hombres incircuncisos? Hermana Natividad, usted en esa época hubiera sido considerada uh, gentil. No teníamos parte, no hubiéramos tenido parte con, con los, uh, verdad, con, con, con los jud uh, judíos en, en esa época, por decirlo así. Y estaban, los que eran circuncisos, circuncidados, estaban en contra del pelo porque iba y les daba palabra de Dios a los gentiles. Entonces, podemos notar, vamos a notar más adelante, hermana Nati, que los gentiles eh, eh, éramos eh, considerados impuros. Uh, eh, ¿Cómo se dice? Uh, 
o sucios, por decir, ¿verdad? Y, y, y después nos vamos a dar cuenta más adelante que Dios les hace ver, le hace ver a Pedro, que a nosotros, que nosotros nos ha limpiado también. Así como limpió la comida. Aquí nos vamos a dar cuenta. Sí. Dice, es, eh, eh, es, entonces, en el 4, entonces comenzó Pedro a contarles, o sea, a explicarles a los circuncisos por orden de lo, de lo sucedido, diciendo, estaba yo en la ciudad de Jope orando. O sea, les, aquí Pedro, para que entendieran los circuncisos, les, les soltó un rollo, como decimos nosotros, sencillamente les soltó una historia a los circuncisos. Right here, uh, on verse 5, brother Kenneth, sister Emily, uh, okay, verse 4, but Peter pre prehearsed the matter from the beginning and ex expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance I saw a vision. Here Peter starts explaining to the circumcised why he went to why he went to the Gentiles to give them word of God. Right here in order to show them he 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 he, he told them a story of uh, about a vision that he had in Joppa one day, one moment. Okay. Estaba yo en el cinco, estaba yo en la ciudad de Jope orando y vi en éxtasis una visión, en otras palabras, hermano Naki, en éxtasis. O sea, él estaba orando y cuando dice en éxtasis, quiere decir que estaba orando y vino a él el Espíritu Santo y entró en una en un trance que, que ya no sabía, ya no sentía lo que había a su alrededor en ese momento porque entró en un éxtasis. O sea, fue, 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 fue tremendo. Se metió en la oración y, y en el espíritu él vio una visión. Entonces, dice, estaba yo en la ciudad de Jope orando y vi en éxtasis una visión, algo semejante a un gran lienzo que descendía, dice, que por las cuatro puntas era bajado del cielo y venía hasta mí. O sea, un lienzo era como, en inglés lo explica como que si fuera una, una sábana, un lienzo, una sábana, ¿verdad? Dice, por las cuatro puntas era bajado del cielo y venía hacia mí. O sea que de las cuatro puntas vamos a hacer de cuenta que, como que tenía cordones y que iba bajando hacia él así. Entonces, uh, dice, cuando fijé en los ojos, ¿verdad? cuando fijé en él los ojos, consideré y vi cuadrúpedos, o sea, animales terrestres y fieras y reptiles y aves del cielo. Y oí una voz que me decía, levántate Pedro, mata y come. <coughs> y le dije, Señor, no porque ninguna cosa común o inmunda entró jamás en mi boca. Entonces la voz me respondió del cielo por segunda vez. Di, eh, dice, lo que Dios limpió, no lo llames tú común. Ok. En, en, en un tiempo... No se podía comer uh, rumiantes. O sea, entre esos estaban los que tenían pezuña. Las vacas, las chivas, los, ¿verdad? Sí. Entonces, dijo él, no señor, no puedo comer de eso porque jamás ha entrado cosa inmunda a mi boca. Y aquí le hice el señor. Entonces la voz me respondió del cielo por segunda vez. Lo que Dios limpió, no lo llames tú común. O sea, está en rojo las letras allí. Quiere decir que es el Señor hablando. O sea, le está diciendo lo que yo limpié, no lo hables común. Y esto se hizo tres veces y volvió todo a ser llevado arriba al cielo. Llevado arriba al cielo, perdón. Y aquí luego llegaron tres hombres a la casa donde yo estaba. Enviados a mí desde Cesarea. 
y el Espíritu me dijo que fuese con ellos sin dudar. Fueron también conmigo estos seis hermanos y entramos a casa de un varón quien nos contó cómo había visto en su casa un ángel que se puso en pie y le dijo envía hombres a Jope y haz venir a Simón el que tiene por sobrenombre Pedro el que te hablará palabras por las cuales serás salvo tú y tú y toda tu casa en otras palabras eh, eh, estos estos personajes vinieron a, a Pedro enviados por este otro hombre ¿Verdad? Para que fuera Pedro a hablarle de Dios. <coughs> ok. Él te hablará palabras por las cuales serás salvo tú y toda tu casa en el 14, ¿verdad? Y luego el 15. Y cuando comencé a hablar, cayó el Espíritu Santo sobre ellos también, como sobre nosotros al principio. Entonces... Me acordé de lo dicho por el Señor cuando dijo, Juan ciertamente bautizó en agua, mas vosotros seréis bautizados con el Espíritu Santo. Si Dios, pues, les concedió también el mismo don que a nosotros que hemos creído en el Señor Jesucristo, ¿quién era yo que pudiese estorbar a Dios? Ok, entendimos, o sea, vienen, uh, verdad, los fariseos, un momento, just one moment, vinieron a él, verdad, los de la circuncisión, y le reprocharon, que tienes que andar con ellos, uh, the circumcised came to Peter, and reproached to him and contented against him uh, saying who are you to go with the Gentiles and, get, and, and take the word of God to them in other words the word of God we consider the word of God as bread right and the Gentiles uh, in those times we were considered uh, what were we considered in English brother uh, I have, I have to read it in English. Infidels. Huh? Infidels. Infidels, what is that? Okay. Unclean. Unclean, okay. Yeah. Uh, in Spanish, uh, dog, like dogs, prairie, prairie dogs. We were considered dogs. The Gentiles. Okay. Éramos considerados los gentiles. En esa época éramos considerados perrillos, hermana Nati. Perrillos. Okay. Imagine that, sister. They, they had us in a, in a bad concept. At those, at those times. That's why they were against Peter because he went into the, their houses to speak the word of God. But then in order for them to, to make, for Peter to make them understand why, he says that he came into an ecstasy when he was praying. To God. And he saw that vessel coming down from the heavens. He, he saw that, that vessel in the form of a sheep, like a, the one with the, you cover yourself at night. Imagine that. From the four corners of that vessel, it was it, it, something was holding each corner and it was coming directly into uh, unto him. And he, he saw all kinds of animals. He saw cows, he saw sheep, he saw goats, the kind kind of food that people couldn't eat at those times. It was unclean to eat that. And God told him, Peter, get up, kill and eat. And he, Peter said, never in my life Unclean food has entered, entered through my mouth. And then God told him, why, uh, why do you call unclean what God cleaned already? 
I'm translating it exactly like I would from from, uh, from Spanish. So that's how. In other words, that's how Peter understood that if God cleaned those animals and we could eat now from that meat, the same way He cleaned the uh, the Gentiles. And who am I to get on God's way? That's what Peter said. Entonces, eh, bajo el lienzo con diferentes animales, cuadrúpedos, dice allí, reptiles, aves del cielo, reptiles, uh, birds from the heavens. Y, y dice, Pedro, levántate, mata y come. Traga, ¿verdad? Llénate el buche. Y dijo Pedro, jamás en mi vida había entrado cosa inmunda por mi boca. Y luego le dijo el Señor, no llames inmundo lo que Dios limpió. En otras palabras, allí a Pedro le cayó el 20 y dijo, entonces a los gentiles Dios los limpió. También igual que como limpió estos animales que podemos nosotros ahora comer. No ¿Quién soy yo para estorbarle a Dios? Entonces, fue la manera que Pedro encontró para explicarles a estos personajes. That is the way that Peter found, aleluya, to explain to these people why he was taking the word of God to other people, to, to the Gentiles. And that is our mission today, brother Kenneth. Remember what we were talking earlier. That is our mission. When we're speaking of this congregation, hallelujah, used to be from the Church of Christ. Hallelujah. Who am I to get up on God's way? Not permitting, hallelujah, for, those, for that people to hear good news of salvation to hear hallelujah that Jesus still loves me and loves them hallelujah who am I to get on God's way hallelujah they might not be apostolics they might not uh, hallelujah be uh, uh, in other words from our beliefs yet but hallelujah we can Bring the word of God to them. Hallelujah. And the word of God can convince them. Hallelujah. To come to the. Uh, hallelujah. To the old path. Hallelujah. ¿Quién soy yo? Para no hablarles. Hallelujah. Platicábamos antes de que llegara usted hermana Nati. De la congregación que existía aquí antes de nosotros. ¿Dónde están? Y por eso mismo no. That's why, Brother Kenneth, I never got rid of those preachers. That's why they're, they're there. Because uh, they belong here. And yes, God asked me, where are they? He asked me. And I, I knew why God asked me in prayer. I was in prayer, and I know I knew why he asked me, and I, I, I was I wasn't gonna question him. Why do you ask me? How should I know? No, because I know. I know what his intentions were when he asked me. In other words, he, by that making that question, he was telling me go, <laughs> go, and and, and uh, bring him back, rescue them back, because they belong here. This belongs to them. Hey, it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God first. But this was established, this place was established here for me, for them, and for you, and for the rest. Okay. Whoever they may be, I don't know yet who the rest are, but God knows already. So, hallelujah. Verse 13, and he 
showed us how he had seen an angel. Speaking about, about that man, man who sent those others to go and bring Peter to him. Because he wanted to hear the word of God. And, and Peter obey those orders to go <coughs> to that man's house. Hallelujah. And it says in verse 13 again, and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, send men to Joppa and call Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all my house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. In other words, Peter is saying that by him obeying God's will with going to that man's house and Show, uh, speak to him the word of God. He was convinced, and him and his family were convinced and were saved. In other words, here we can we can see that Peter not only talked to the man, but his whole family was there. Maybe they they were probably sitting on the table. And they they had a dinner or something. After eating their dinner, now Peter started started uh, talking the word of God, <clears throat> and the man was convinced. His family were uh, got convinced as well, and they got saved. Okay, so tell me, brother Kenneth, sister Emily, what we do. Is it good or no? For the for the Lord, what we do for the Lord is it is it good or is, or no? Of course, it's good. We are getting somewhere. It's not like we 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 can say, "I'm doing this in vain." I'm not getting nothing out of it. No. No. It's not for us. It's for God. En otras palabras, aquí dice, verso 13 y 14, dice, ¿Quién, dice, quién nos contó? O sea, bueno, voy a leer, voy a leer el 12 también, porque en español es diferente. Y el Espíritu me dijo que fuese con ellos, sin duda, aquí, sin dudar, aquí está Pedro hablando. Fueron también conmigo estos seis hermanos y entramos en casa de un varón que nos contó cómo había visto en su casa un ángel que se puso en pie y le dijo, envía hombres a Jope y haz venir a Simón, el que tiene por sobrenombre Pedro. En otras palabras, un ángel se le presentó a este señor y le dijo, envía, envía hombres para Jope y manda a traer a Pedro para que te dé palabra de Dios. Imagínense qué haría usted mi hermana y Dani, hermana Nati, ¿qué haría usted si se, si se le presentara un ángel así, verdad? Que viera toda la forma, verdad, de un hombre, pero es un ángel. ¿Entiendes? Porque se, se puede presentar en forma así como nosotros y lo puede ver usted tal cual, tal cual me ve a mí, me, me gane. Imagínese, qué glorioso. O sea, o sea, nosotros somos un poco menor que los ángeles. Pero tenemos un lugar especial en el cielo. Los ángeles, va a haber personajes allá atendiéndonos a nosotros. ¿Quiénes somos nosotros? Entonces, por esa causa la mujer usa, usa el velo. En reverencia, ¿verdad? Porque eh, eh, el varón es cabeza de la mujer. Entonces, en la, la, la mujer, para, para sujetarse, tiene que ponerse el velo. Porque pueden decir los ángeles... Si nosotros somos mayores, ¿quién es ella para no cubrirse delante de ti, Señor? 
Entonces, por esa razón lo explica la Biblia. Bueno, ay, ya me salió un poquito, pero imagínense que se le presente un ángel y le, y, y le diga, manda a tal, a fulano de tal o a, 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 a estos a hombres a casa del hermano fulano de tal para que venga y le hable palabra de Dios. Imagínense la necesidad que los gentiles tenían. Imagine the need of the Gentiles to hear the word of God. It was a need because God wanted it that way. And then it became personal for the people. I have a need. You see what I'm, what I'm saying? They started to they started to feel that that uh that warm inside of them that was moving a, a little warm, saying, "I have a need. I need. I feel like I need to hear about God." So it first be, uh, it began first with being a, 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 a God's need. It's like God saying, I need you to go to this man's house and talk to him about me. And, and then it, it, it turned into that man's personal need. I feel the urge. I feel like I need to hear uh, something about God. And that is the same need that we felt at the beginning, Sister Emily. I remember perfectly. When I used to, uh, when I started visiting the church, at first I just went just to go with my wife and because my brother in law used to invite us to church and, and just to be polite with my brother in law, I just went, right? And I just sat down at the very uh, back and I just sat there and I just heard the word and I just heard a man uh, screaming and yelling his guts out <laughs> behind the pulpit and saying Jesus loves you and I would just oh, okay, this takes very long this, it takes too long I want to go home and drink me a, a beer drink me this and that. see my wife my wife didn't know I used to smoke because I used to hide it from her. I used to, I used to hide myself from, from her to smoke. But I was a heavy smoker. And uh, when I was there, man, this takes long. I want to go home and smoke me a cigarette. And <laughs> <laughs> See, because I was with that attitude, I just went to church. I just went to hear the word of God. To hear a man yelling behind the pulpit. But then, Brother Kenneth, I went because it was God's desire for me to go. It was God's need. Because, yes, God shows us his needs. Even though he's God and we think that he doesn't need me. Because it is true. In my standing point of view, he doesn't need me. But I don't... Uh, uh, I re really, I don't, I still don't know everything that he, uh, that goes through his mind, right? We know parts because it, by his mercy, he shows us things, but we still can't understand everything that goes through his mind, right? So in my standpoint point of view, He doesn't need me, but yet he shows me that he needed me, okay? So he had the need for me to go, even though I was going to uh, sit on the, on the very back of, uh, of the room, he didn't mind that. He just wanted me, he just wanted to see me there, okay? But then, then I... Slowly I started hearing the word of God and understanding the word of God 
and then it became my personal need. And then I would rush to church. It didn't matter that between my house and church, when we were driving to church, it didn't matter that all of a sudden we would start arguing, my wife and me. It didn't matter. Even though I, I would get uh, to church and get off my car and start walking to, into the church angry, but at the moment that I would open the doors to enter to the house of the Lord, my, my life would change. And then I would, uh, I started to understand the power of God. That even though I was mad, I was angry with my wife, my wife was mad against me too. And, uh, but we would enter to the house of the Lord and everything would change. The whole panoramic view. And then, we, we would hug. I would hug my wife and everything would calm down again. But that, uh, honestly, that is a sacrifice. It is a sacrifice when really you don't have the urge of wanting to hear the word of God. But when you have the urge of hearing the word of God, you don't mind that your uh, your wife, your husband starts getting angry against you. All you want to do is go to church. As soon as you enter the, the gates, right, of heaven, it's like entering the gates of heaven when you go to church. That's the way I see it. Everything will change. Honestly, I don't promise nothing. It is God who will promise us that promises to us that as soon as we, we enter the gates, hallelujah, he's going to change our situation. But it, was, it didn't matter to me because it, it began to be an urge to me. It turned into a need, <laughs> hallelujah, that I, all I wanted is to get to church and to hear the songs that they were singing, to hear my sister, my brother speaking in new tongues. I used to love that. Yes, at the beginning, I used to think that that was crazy. Uh, that was, uh, I mean, I felt like they were just uh, faking it. But then, Sister Emily, when the songs, when the, the brothers would start singing the songs, I, I would start crying. And I would ask myself, why am I crying if I'm happy? Why am I crying? I shouldn't be crying. But yet, I'm crying. And then, all of a sudden, when nobody, uh, without nobody asking me, I, I would start crying. And all the way from the back, I would start walking to the altar by myself. And I knew it was just me in the altar, and the preacher was still preaching, in the middle of preaching, and the, the rest of the people applauding to, uh, to the word of God. Yeah, in hallelujah, glory to God. And there I am, walking to the altar, crying. Started lifting my arms. See, that's the effect of the word of God, sister Emily, uh, brother Kenneth. Ese es el efecto del Espíritu Santo, hermanas. Hallelujah, que estoy dando testimonio. Hallelujah, de, le, de que lo que hacemos no es en vano. Si Pedro se hubiera rehusado ir a la casa de aquel varón, imagínese. El, 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 la gravedad del asunto ya que que hubiera sucedido pero Pedro fue obediente para empezar estaba orando entró en un éxtasis y se le presentan estos hombres dice al principio dice oyeron los apóstoles ok voy a leer oyeron los apóstoles y los hermanos que estaban en Judea que también los gentiles habían recibido la palabra de Dios. Y cuando Pedro subió a Jerusalén, disputaban con él los que eran de la circuncisión, diciendo, ¿por qué has entrado en casa de hombre, hombres incircuncisos y has comido con ellos? Entonces comenzó Pedro a contarles por orden de, su, de lo sucedido, diciendo, 
Estaba yo en la ciudad de Jope orando, fíjese, estaba orando, no estaba nada más por estar. Estaba yo en la ciudad de Jope orando y vi en un éxtasis, una visión, algo semejante a un, un gran lienzo que, se, que descendía, que por las cuatro puntas era bajado del cielo y venía hasta mí. Cuando fijé en él los ojos, consideré y vi cuadrúpedos terrestres y fieras y reptiles y aves del cielo. Y oí una, una voz de, eh, que me decía, levántate Pedro, mata y come. Y dije, Señor, no, porque ninguna cosa común o inmunda entró jamás en mi boca. Ok. Bueno, y voy a, me voy a brincar al 11. Y aquí luego llegaron tres hombres, ahí está, a la casa donde yo estaba. O sea, no dice a mi casa. Porque dice, estaba yo en la ciudad de Jope, ¿verdad? Dice... Entonces la voz me respondió, uh, no, no, perdón, ¿dónde? Ok, no, no sé. Y aquí luego llegaron tres hombres a la casa donde yo estaba, enviados a mí desde Cesarea. Ok, fueron tres hombres. O sea, aquí este hombre, mandó, por órdenes del ángel que se le presentó, dijo... Se, se le aparece el ángel y le dice, manda hombres para Jope, otra vez, ¿verdad? Y manda a traer a Pedro para que te hable de Dios. Imagínese aquí el, el juego que hay. O sea, no solo fue la obediencia de Pedro ir a donde este hombre, sino que fue primero, empezó por primero el ángel obedecer la orden de Dios. Dios le dijo al ángel, preséntatele a este hombre. Ve, aparecetele ahí en su casa y dile a ese hombre, manda a otros hombres. A donde Pedro. Ok, entonces primero obedeció el ángel. ¿Verdad? Y fue a la casa del hombre y le dijo al hombre, manda a otros hombres. Entonces obedeció también el Señor y mandó a, a tres hombres. Y esos tres hombres obedecieron y fueron a donde Pedro. Y Pedro obedeció y fue otra vez al Señor. ¿Verdad? Fueron cuatro, ¿verdad? Cuatro, cuatro veces. Four times. Somebody obeyed. A, a, a commandment. It was the angel. First. That pres uh, presented to this man. God told the angel, go to this man's house and tell him, send men to Peter, to bring Peter. Okay. The angel obeyed, the man himself obeyed, the three men that, he's, that the man sent to Peter, they obeyed. Peter, they went to Peter and he obeyed and went to this man's house. In other words, it was God's will. It wasn't even the angel's will. It wasn't the man himself, uh, himself will first. It was God's will to send an angel and to tell him, tell, uh, like saying, tell brother Kenneth, angel go and tell Kenneth to send three men and go call upon Peter to come to this house. The angel obeyed, brother Kenneth obeyed, the other three obeyed, and then Peter obeyed the word of God. What if Peter wouldn't have done it? Imagine that. Or even worse, what if the angel wouldn't obey? But the angel came from the presence of, from the presence of God. He could uh, probably see his his figure in heavens i don't know if he can see his his face i don't know that but he he can probably see his figure he can hear his voice uh his uh he literally knows how jesus sounds when he speaks see what i'm saying and he 
came obeying the word of God. But you know what is the, the most beautiful thing, Sister Emily? That we can't see God, but we can hear his voice. We can feel when he's speaking to us. And we can hear that beautiful voice saying, do this, do that. Hallelujah. We can feel his touch. We can't see him, but we can feel him when he comes. Hallelujah. And touch us. Hallelujah. Even better when he comes and pours the Holy Spirit into us. Oh, that is something beautiful, Sister Emily. Hallelujah. So tell me, isn't it an important task that Peter had? Now, Peter is in our same situation. We are in his situation as well. Peter was a disciple of God. We are disciples too. Because Jesus said to, to his disciples before going to the heavens, he said, go unto the world. And make, bring new disciples. Bring new disciples. So we have that same task that Peter had. We have the same uh, task that the Apostle Paul had. To go out and bring disciples. Yes. We don't need to be in this four, inside of these four walls. Hallelujah. To call unto people. We don't need a structural building to talk to people. We can speak to the people out there in our job when we go to the store. Hallelujah. The way Brother Kenneth love, love, likes to, <laughs> to talk to people when he's in the stores, make jokes and stuff like that. That's the very same way we can tell people that Jesus loves us. God is great. He can find his way, hallelujah, to go to us. You know that we, didn't, we weren't searching for God. I wasn't searching for God. He was searching for me. He, he sent somebody to uh, Brother Edmundo. For him to come to his church. And when I'm saying his church, I'm not speaking about the building. I'm speaking about the people. The church is the, the people. And he sent my, first he sent my sister. I used to have, I say I used to have because she's not married anymore to my brother. He sent my sister-in-law to talk to me about God. And my sister-in-law is my wife's aunt. That's how I met my wife. Through my sister-in-law. Okay. And then she was baptized. And, and my and my brother-in-law, he was baptized. And then when, when I married my wife, then it, 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 it was good for my for my brother-in-law because he's a musician too. So we got together and we started playing, singing to the Lord. Pablo and Silas, or Paul and Silas, or Silas? Yeah. Silas. That's how I used to see us. <laughs> I, I used to tell him, I feel like we're Paul and Silas. Because we're, we, we used to get together and, and, and sing and play music for the Lord, sing. And uh, there were beautiful moments. So that's the, that is the way that he started working with me. Through the music. He started saying, hey, everybody out there, they call me Mundo. Hey, Mundo, let's go. You, you want to go with me to church and play with me? I'm going to present some uh, hands, like two or three hands, and I would like for you to uh, play, uh, play with me. And that's the way he started working with me. I told him uh, he was wise. He's still wise, a wise man. But 
That's the way I started going to church, visiting the church. And like I said, Sister Emily, I would just go and just sit there and just listen to somebody talking in the back of the pulpit. But the word has its effect. It's, it, it is not the man that's speaking it. It's the spirit that comes into the person, hallelujah, that, that's talking and convincing the other person. It is the spirit of God. So don't feel, Sister Emily, like you don't know, like you don't know how to talk to people. Even though you're speaking your own language, we say, but I don't know how to talk. I don't know how to convince the person. It is not you that is going to convince the person, Sister Emily. It is the Holy Ghost. You just do your part. Just You just let yourself go with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit take control of your life. You just open your mouth and start moving your tongue. That's all you need to do, Sister Emily. Open your mouth and move your tongue. How? By talking about your testimony, how Jesus came into your life. You don't really, this is just at the beginning. Uh, it's not, it doesn't work always, Sister Amy. It's, it is just at the beginning so you can learn how to talk to people about the Word of God. Okay? This is the, uh, just the beginning. Just talk about your testimony. How God started working with, uh, with you in your life. What scripture of the Bible touched your life? If you remember, I don't know. If you, if, 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 because every, every person operates different. right? They, uh, believe it or not, there's people that, that say, Oh, when I heard this scripture the, the, the very first time, that's when, that's when I started feeling uh, something special in my life. I started listening to And other people say, oh, when I heard this song, oh, man, I feel something beautiful. See? And that's, the, that, that's what happened to me. That, of course, I, I, I was already a musician. I used to love the, the songs that they sing in church. Yes, but I wasn't really interested in, in, in the songs because I was already a musician. I would feel that, uh, that cavity in my life Myself in my house. Now, what I was interested in to listen, it was to the preacher. Yes, the music was pretty for me. Yes, but I would pay attention to the preacher, to every scripture he, he read. And, and even though I, I would forget when, whenever I went to my house and I would ask my wife, what was the scripture again? And she would forget too. And well, but then, That's how it started working. Hallelujah. And, and, and the fir, uh, one of the first scriptures that caught my attention was that. 1 Corinthians. Uh, sixteen, And then verse 13 and 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Verse 13 and 14. I... I That's one of the first scriptures that caught my attention because I am a man. <laughs> I am a man. And that, that scripture is one of the scriptures that showed me how to, be a, how, how to be a real man. And a real man is that man that serves God, not that man that serves himself. Hallelujah. A real man is a man, it's a man that serves God. And it says, in, the, in those scriptures, it says, for me to man up, to stand firm, hallelujah, to be alert, spiritually talking, to be alert for me and my wife and my children, hallelujah. So, to make a, uh, a stop on this I'm going to read it again and I'm going to read it in Spanish oyeron los apóstoles y los hermanos que estaban en Judea que también los gentiles habían recibido la palabra de Dios 
Oh, qué celo han de, han de haber sentido. Que también los gentiles, los que no se apegaban a la ley, ¿verdad? No tenía nada que ver con ellos. No tenía nada en común con ellos. No se apegaban a la ley de, de esos tiempos. En cambio, Pablo sí, ¿verdad? Pablo sí. Pero Pablo, nos damos cuenta que en otra parte que, que reta a Pedro. Pablo en, en otras escrituras no está Pedro porque en un momento Pedro se hacía para donde calentaban gordas como decíamos cuando, cuando no quería que lo condenaran los, la circuncisión se hacía para que para aquel bando y luego después se hacía para el bando de los gentiles y, y, y Pablo dijo entonces que eres o no eres verdad no andes ahí con cosas con medias tazas eh, o sea tú estás para servir a Dios no estás para andar ahí con payasadas bueno, haciéndote, haciéndote para de caliente tan gorda nomás. O sea, lo, Pablo era una persona que mis respetos, o sea, yo, yo pongo mi vista mucho en él, en Pablo. Entonces, y cuando Pedro subió en el 2, subió a Jerusalén, disputaban con él los que eran de la circuncisión, diciendo, ¿por qué has entrado en casa de hombres? incircuncisos y has comido con ellos why did you enter uh, uh, into a circumcised man's house and ate with them why they would ask him Peter that is no no that's not right <laughs> entonces comenzó Pedro a contarles por orden de lo sucedido diciendo estaba yo I was In the city of Joppa. Okay. That's what he replied. I was. In the city of Joppa. Praying. He wasn't just there. Like I was at the beginning. He wasn't just there sister. He was praying. And he came into an ecstasy. In other words. He was praying. And the Holy the Spirit. Take possession of Peter. And he. He. Everything got confused in his in his life in that moment. He, his mind his mind was just with God, and he saw that vessel descending from the heavens with all kinds of animals, cows, sheep, goats, even birds, doves, you name it. He was he was praying. And in that prayer, he saw, a vi he saw that vision. And then God, he heard the voice of God telling him, Peter, stand up, kill and eat. Just that. But he said, like a wise man, oh, no, no. No filthy thing, no. Have, have, have an interest in my mouth. And God told him, no. In other words, you just obey, eat it, and with, with that same obedience, that's how he went to the Gentiles, Sister Emily, and that's the way we, as the Church of God, are going to go into the people, Hallelujah, and talk to them about the Word of God. Talk to them about the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Not my doctrine. It's because there will be religion. I don't want to talk to them about religion. I want to talk to them about the doctrine of Jesus Christ. How Jesus wants us to walk his path. Hallelujah. Not how man wants people to walk. No. The only thing that we teach in this church, people, that you're out there listening, the only thing that we teach in this church is the word of God. Okay? I don't teach about me. I don't have nothing to do with this. It's God that's taking control of me that's taking control of the people that come to this church. 
And like Paul, like, like Paul said, if somebody wants to contend, the church of God, we don't practice that. Just as plain and simple. If you want to contend against me, that's in vain. Because I don't have that practice. At least I don't want to, I don't want to practice that. I don't want to be contending with nobody about the word, about what the word of God says. If the word of God says that, I can't, I can't say nothing. I cannot say nothing. So that's all we teach here in this place. In English or in Spanish, I can say it. I can't speak French or Italian or Tagalog yet. I wish I could speak Tagalog. But everybody that comes to this church, we understand either Spanish or English. And that's, that's how we teach here. The Word of God. In Spanish and English. So. And the apostles. And the brethren. That were in Judea. Heard that the Gentiles. Had also received the word of God. There was some great jealousy. With the. Uh, circumcises. That. Not even they were. Knowing about God. But even Gentiles. Were receiving. The word of of God. And blessed be Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Hallelujah. Blessed be the word of God. Let's uh, stand up for a moment. Hallelujah. Let's get on our feet. And we're going to pray to God. And we're going to give thanks to him. For everything he's done in our lives. And I'm going to ask you to pray. And whatever you're praying, believe that God is listening to you this morning. Anything, whatever you pray unto God, believe that he is going to answer your prayers. He is going to answer. Either It is going to be what you want it want to be, or it is going to be just what he wants, contrary to what you want. But he is going to answer something.